everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Inspiring Leaders and Leadership by Advantage Club. My name is Smithy. I'm the founder of Advantage Club and your host for this podcast today. Uh, today we have another amazing person joining us all the way from Manila in the middle of a crazy storm, by the way. Uh, we have Darwin Rivers, who is the VP HR and Global HR Operations at Inspiro Philippines. Welcome, Darwin, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Smithy, for the invitation. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day to all of you guys who are watching and listening to this podcast. Uh, again, my name is Darwin Rivers, and uh, I'm also the founder and president of the Philippines HR Group. This is an organization or a community of more than 300,000 HR and HR allied professionals here in the Philippines. Yes, and I'm part of that group too, so that's amazing. <laughs> so uh, Darwin has been uh, working pretty much behind the curtains, uh, running the group. Uh, and I think it's, it's he's been doing a fabulous job at it. So that's also something we'll talk about today, uh, in addition to his current official roles and responsibilities as leading HR for Inspiro. Uh, so Darwin, um, to start with, uh, of course, we know a lot about you, but we'd love to let the audience know as well. So can you start a little bit with your background, uh, what you do, your journey of reaching where you are today? Sure, let me, well, um, I have, more than 20 plus years of experience, uh, working experience. Um, most of it is in the BPO shared services industry. Uh, I started my career in operations. I started my career as an agent, moved my way to becoming a coach up to an operations supervisory level, and then decided that um, I've been doing a lot of stuff that is connected to HR. I'm uh, interviewing candidates for my team. I've been training uh, team members. I've been um, overseeing their performance management, handling case management and whatnot. So it was natural for me, plus the fact that my educational background is in behavioral science, it was natural for me to gravitate and move from operations to human resource. And um, as a human resource professional, I had work in different industries, although most of it are in the BPO shared services IT industries. But uh, I've also been a consultant uh, working with uh, mostly startup companies and mostly uh, global companies who would like to have entities here or set up entities here in the Philippines, um, small and vision enterprises uh, in various industries like food and beverage, retail, uh, leisure, and a whole lot of other industries. Um, I'm fortunate enough that uh, I was able to start a career in HR where I really fell in love and met a lot of wonderful people who have um, provided me with the support and uh, the guidance in growing my career. So I'm just giving back to the community of whatever uh, little success that I have had or opportunities that I have had in the past through the Philippines HR Group. I think you're being modest here, uh, considering that the Philippines HR Group has over 300,000 members. So we'd love to hear your story behind that. So, you know, everyone is so busy in their corporate jobs, especially when you're leading HR in a large organization. It's even harder and you barely get time for anything else. So tell us the story behind starting this and scaling this up to 300,000 members. How did you do that? Well, it started as an online community. Um, so 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, it was, it started in a, uh, it was a Yahoo group, actually. It started as a Yahoo group. And then um, there was also a job street community where uh, different HR professionals from across industries are exchanging ideas and whatnot. The problem with that uh, platform is that um, it was, 
closed down by Job Street, and also the Yahoo groups was also it also become obsolete, and um, uh, it was more of exchanges of emails uh, and whatnot. And during my time, uh, a lot of HR professionals, when I was starting my career, a lot of HR professionals are really in the position of a sink and swim. Uh, experience. And I'm saying this because it was during my generation where trainings are very costly, um, very limited opportunities for talent development are available. Um, even if you graduate from a human resource or industrial psychology uh, background and you start your career in HR, it will be very hard for you to marry the theoretical and the actual work. So I've seen a lot of my colleagues that are really, I would say, um, having challenges and difficulties. So when, when Facebook uh, created uh, Facebook groups, um, I started a small community among my network of friends. And mostly these are the people who are uh, friends throughout the industry, uh, colleagues, uh, previous team members that was part of my team when I was work when I started my career in HR. So imagine these are the people who I've worked with since early 2000s, who are up to now after 20 years has been with me and uh, supporting the mission vision of the online community. And um, it was really more of a private community. And um, we decided to go public and to it started in 2014. We decided to go public, uh, public uh, as a public group to encourage more people in discussion and exchanges of best practices and sharing of our experiences and knowledge and also updates about uh, labor, about um, uh, 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 what are the particular trainings in that we can or our certifications that we can uh, learn and whatnot. So we created this group, the Philippines HR group, as an avenue. It's a safe space for people who would like to share their experience, share their knowledge, get information and ideas and valuable inputs from people who are seasoned HR. And it 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 morphed um, from an initial less than two hundred uh, people. Uh, we've never advertised, but it grew from 200 to 5,000 to 20,000. Um, also, uh, by 2017, we've decided to register it as uh, a nonprofit, nonstop organization, because it was during that time that we're, we stepped up our game, where not only do we have an online platform, an online community, but we've also started providing uh, free face-to-face -face or public seminars, public workshops that are either free or very cost-effective that um, actually change the, the game in terms of uh, how vendors are charging people in terms of uh, training and development or, or certifications or whatnot. During my time, you, whenever you're to attend a training program, a workshop, or any certification programs, you have to spend thousands and thousands of pesos. But because of what we did, we've changed the game and um, we've started providing very cost-effective uh, offerings of certifications, training programs, public seminars. And most of them are actually free because we have friends who are sponsoring our public events. So that's where we started and that's how we grew into uh, this very dynamic and very, how can I say, very dynamic, active and um, growing community still. And I think that is true um, knowledge sharing in its true sense, right? Because you're not, uh, you're, not you're, you're doing it as a nonprofit, you're not doing it to uh, make money out of it, you really, really want to create a community of people who can learn from knowledge sharing with each other. So it's it's a truly noble cause for the Philippine HR community as well. Agree, and also it um, uh, drives a sense of volunteerism. We never have 
someone who we pay to whenever we have events. Uh, there are really a lot of volunteers. Uh, and when I say volunteers, these are not only entry-level people. These are HR directors, HR managers who would like to, to be part of our program, who would be okay to be ushers, uh, to be part of registration, to be at the background, or even speakers. I mean, these are the people who who had the sense of um, they have passion in 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 that in the the things that they do. They have passion in HR, and they would like to give back to the community. I think that's where every one of us. Uh, is thriving. The reason why we're thriving is because each and every one of us recognize that by working together, we are able to do more and we are able to affect more and inspire more people. Talking about inspiration, who has been uh, inspiring you to you know do so many things at the same time? Like who has been your biggest supporter or your biggest mentor over the course of your career? Well, aside from my mom, who has at an early age taught me that education is the only treasure that um, she can leave me and that uh, I should value each and every opportunity for me to learn and upskill myself. That's the reason why uh, I take all of the opportunities for me to attend different learning programs, certifications, and whatnot. I value learning. Um, it was also through learning that I'm able to network with more people and learn from people, right? But in terms of mentor, I've had work with um, leaders who have, who have been my direct and indirect mentors. When I say direct mentors, these are the people who I've worked with, uh, not particularly in only in HR, but also in other departments who I try to... Uh, um, these are the people who inspire me because of how they think, uh, how they work, and how they manage teams. It's their thought process that um, made me appreciate them as a leader, how they resolve issues, how they're able to manage uh, difficult and challenging situations. So those are my mentors. And I also have mentors who, are, who I never had the opportunity to work with, but I see them as mentors because I read their books, I attend their, their seminars, webinars. Uh, these are local and international um, seasoned leaders, not only in HR, but also as a people leader, that I see them as a mentor, even they don't know you personally. But because I read the kind of work that they do, I invite the way that they think, the way that they do things, the way that they... Uh, how they 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 uh, uh, created a journey not only for themselves but for for the people that um, believes and follows them. Awesome! And let's also talk a little bit about your current role. So, obviously, as the VPHR, uh, one of the core responsibilities which you would have is to drive an amazing employee experience, a better employee engagement. Um, so how have you innovated engagement or recognition programs in Inspiro for your employees? Uh, not only in Inspiro, but um, in all of the other companies, organizations that I've been with, uh, recognition is part of employee engagement. And um, I think as a people leader, we should not only look into employee engagement per se, but also be reminded of the employee experience because an employee can be highly engaged or let's say, I'll, oh, let, let me rephrase that. An employee can be very satisfied at work, but it does not mean that that employee is highly engaged. Do you agree? An employee can be highly engaged, but it doesn't mean that they are, uh, they could be, um, how would you say, they, the, the way that they see the organizations, they don't see themselves always as a part of that organization because they the don't, they don't belong, they don't 
able to look into the experience. What's my experience as an employee? So I think employee engagement and employee experience goes hand in hand for you to be successful in your uh, strategy for the whole employee engagement strategy that you will be driving. Um, I always believe that uh, employee engagement and um, employee experience, looking at those two things are, how say, the formula for successful organizations. So employee engagement plus employee, employee experience equals productivity uh, equals growth. Absolutely, absolutely agree with you. And uh, uh, that also brings me to the last question of today's podcast. Uh, you know, so employee needs are forever changing now. And therefore to drive a better employee experience, it's become harder and harder for leaders to address to these needs. So what would be your advice for the HR leaders of tomorrow? My advice would be, hmm, I would, I would say that, um, I would put it as a more of an engagement enigma for a lot of companies. I mean, a lot of companies have been spending billions of billions of dollars in terms of creating different engagement programs or engagement activities or whatnot. Um, they have the right intentions. I just feel that a lot of us may have the wrong focus because there's no employee experience. And then uh, the lack of simple but effective tools. And when I say effective and simple tools, this can be what? Your daily routine of your one-on-ones, your daily routine of really engaging employees, or having a system in place that would uh, be able to regularly and periodically recognize employees for their uh, for doing uh, above and beyond, for going above and beyond, or for doing the best uh, work that they can do in the organization. So that's that is for me. Um, simple but effective tools, processes, and procedures that really focuses not only in engagement, not only in rewards and recognitions, but entirely on the experience of employees. Yeah, so the key takeaway from uh, Darwin today is that one, an employee can be a great performer, but that does not necessarily mean that they're engaged. And, uh, you know, for a lot of organizations, they're facing that engagement enigma today, where there's lack of focus, where there's, you know, they're complicated processes. Instead, you just need simple, effective tools, and also just trying to create a better connect with the employees. Um, and I think that's the golden rule to driving employee experience. With that, uh, this is the end of our podcast. And thank you so much, Darwin, for joining us today. We're truly elated to have you here and uh, keep inspiring all these amazing uh, HRs in the groups you've created and uh, all the best for adding more and more people in your Philippines HR group in the future. Thank you, Smithy. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of your podcast and uh, the, the opportunity to have a venue to share um, my experience and also whatever little things that I can give or share to the community of people that, uh, uh, that would be watching this podcast. So thank you very much.